When I first started back in 2017, it took me over 200 hours of product research to find my first product. And looking back at it now, I don't think that I was, because it was a difficult process that it took me so long, but because I was unclear in what I was supposed to do, and so I was always looking for perfection. I remember combing through you know, hundreds of products and every time finding something that was wrong with it and some reason why I couldn't invest into it and I couldn't pursue it. It's probably many of the same things you're hearing now. You know, It has to be small, it has to fit in a shoebox, 35% profit margin, blah, blah, blah. While some of those things are true, it doesn't have to be like that. If you have some clarity on exactly what you're looking for and how to determine a winning product, you don't have to be like me. You don't have to spend hundreds of hours doing product research and almost looking for reasons why you can't invest into things. So in this video, I'm gonna show you seven rules you can follow to help you make better decisions when you're choosing a product. Hey, what's up guys, Anif here. And first and foremost, I wanna say that not every product that you're gonna invest in is gonna be successful. I think that there's this uh, misconception or misunderstanding that when, you know, even people who have successful Amazon businesses, that every product they launch is a successful one. And while the better you do get at it, the more you can recoup of your costs and even sometimes break even, which is awesome, not every product is gonna be successful. And I would say that at this point, about 25%, you know, if you have some experience, 25% of the products that you launch, you know, they might not necessarily lose you money, but they're not products you're gonna reorder and spend more time with. So just because you follow these rules, it doesn't mean that you're gonna find an amazing product that's gonna make you, you know, $100,000 a month. But it's definitely the first steps in understanding exactly what makes up a good product and uh, gives you some framework so that you're not in this constant loop of analysis paralysis and trying to find excuses not to invest in something. The most important thing is obviously to start. And so if you can do that smart, that's the best option. So let's dive into rule number one, which actually comes with two steps. And it has to do with the difficulty level of entering the market. And the first step you have to overcome, the first thing you have to make sure of is that the market that you're going into isn't oversaturated. And I don't mean with like the number of reviews, I mean with the number of sellers. So let's dive in the computer and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Uh, here we have the Milestone Blanket. This is actually a product that a lot of people have fallen for um, by accident and entered these markets. Uh, because it looks like a good product, the, mar uh, the kind of revenues and, and ratios look good, but the actual amount of sellers in the space is actually kind of mind blowing. So the way to determine if there are too many sellers in the space is um, uh, one thing I do right off the bat. So when you see a first page, for example, with all the products looking fairly similar, you know, they're a little bit different, different, but they're mostly the same. If you scroll down to the bottom, a lot of the time, so, I mean, this is a long page, but you scroll down to the bottom and you go to page two. If you see that on page two, there are sellers with hundreds of reviews, you know, 759 reviews, uh, 600 reviews, 300 reviews. And if you keep scrolling, you can even go to page three or page four. And with this one, every single page, first of all, is all the exact same products. They're all these milestone blankets. And even if you go to page three, there's, you know, someone here with 3000 reviews. Um, 500 reviews and so that's actually a, a very very bad sign so first thing you're looking for is that you know when you get to page two and page three and page four the products start to get less relevant they're not all the exact product that you're looking for that's one thing to look at and two is look at maybe if you're on page two or page three yeah it might be the same product but there's only you know small reviews they don't have huge review ratios uh, so that's uh, you know look this one's a 2,000 reviews almost and it's on the third page I think so that's a big problem and that's the first rule that you need to make sure that you check off before going into a product. The second thing I look for is to make sure that the, the market that I'm going into actually has some room for improvement in some way. Because if a market has average review ratios of 4.8 or higher, means that on Amazon it shows up as a perfect five-star rating. And when you have products that are for perfect five-star rating, it's very, very difficult to enter the market and convince a customer that your product is better than the, the next guy's because the product is already perfect, right? It's five stars. Uh, and a really good example of that is this stemless, stemless tumbler. Uh, if you look here, you can see that, you know, so there's one guy here, 210 reviews, 4.8. This guy's 15,000, 4.7, right? But he has 15,000 reviews, 3,000 reviews, 4.8, um, 416 reviews, 4.8, 2,000 reviews, 4.8, and, you know, 1,000 reviews, 4.8. So there's really no, like, way that you can come in here and, and actually you know do well. Now, it's not fair to say there's no way, but as a beginner, it'll be very difficult because one, you have to have a very, very good visual differentiation, and two, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on advertising and marketing to kind of show why your product is better. So as a beginner, this is even something that I do right now. If I see a market is dominated by five-star sellers, like five-star reviews, I don't really think about going to that product because that product is already 
pretty damn good product. You'll need a lot of money to dethrone those sellers and it's just overall not worth it. Rule number two to watch out for when picking a winning product is to take a look at the reviews and you wanna make sure that the reviews for the market, for the top competitors, is that two out of the top three competitors have less than 1,000 reviews. Now, again, these are all like not hard and fast rules. If you, you know, have an amazing differentiation or if uh, you have a lot of money to spend, you, know, you can go into these markets. But again, as a beginner, if you don't wanna spend a ton of money, this is something you need to look out for. So right here, you can see red plastic cups. Uh, I'm gonna disregard the sponsored, but you can see here, 2,000 reviews, 1,300 reviews, 2,300 reviews. And so the top three competitors are all selling these red, uh, you know, solo cups. They have over a thousand reviews. Uh, and so realistically, if I opened up the Helium 10, you know they would be taking up 80% of the market, right? So 80 to 90% of the market even. So there's really no point of going into a product like this, again, because you're gonna be fighting, fighting for the scraps, essentially. You wanna find a market where the top competitors, your direct competitors, are, you know, have two out of the top three of them having less than 1,000 reviews. So unless you wanna be fighting for the leftovers, it's probably not a good idea for you to actually, you know, be going into markets like this. Rule number three, profitability. And I just picked up one of the baby blankets here and I'm just gonna open up the uh, Helium 10 Chrome extension, go to profitability calculator, and you can see, it's obviously gonna show you the uh, profit margins and ROI. Now, the ROI, let's, let's touch on that first. That one, you need to make sure that's over 125%, ideally. Uh, the reason for that is because if your ROI is lower than that, it becomes very, very difficult to actually keep, continue to reinvest into inventory to grow your business. Because at first you might start off with 200 units or 500 units. If it starts selling, then you can't just reorder 500 units. You got to order a thousand units or 1500 units. And then after that, you may need to order 3000 units, right? So unless you want to keep reinvesting money that, you know, you may not have into a business that's not, you know, bringing cash flow back in it's probably not a good idea to go anything below 120, 110% at the lowest, uh, ideally 125% and higher. Because again, if you go below that, what ends up happening is you kind of defeat the purpose of, the, of, of what it is to start an Amazon business. You know, being able to start with a little bit of money and then grow that into something that cash flows for you in the future. Now, in terms of profit margin, I think over 25% is ideal, so 25% or higher. And when I do these calculations, I don't actually put in my expected PPC costs. I think a lot of people do that. The reason I don't do that is because PPC in my eyes, while it is an expense, it's something that's there to make you more organic sales. And while that does mean, you know, your profit margin will be lower, your ROI is gonna be lower if you spend that money on PPC, uh, the truth is it's okay if you don't profit on your first order or your second order. Uh, if you can plan by your third order to start bringing in a serious cash flow, uh, then it's totally fine. And as your PPC goes longer and longer, you'll be able to optimize your ACoS and bring that down. So uh, for me, I never calculate uh, PPC as an expense uh, in terms of like profitability calculators. Another reason you should consider not calculating your PPC in your profitability calculator is because, uh, you know, there's probably times where you had PPC running and it was unprofitable and then you turned it off and then all your sales stopped completely. Not only just your PPC sales, but also your organic sales. And that's because every PPC sale, you know, draws on more organic sales. So if you know how to optimize your PPC, then it shouldn't really be an expense. And I'll leave some videos down below that will teach you how to optimize. They're very simple, like five minute optimizations that you can implement you know, once a week to really drastically lower your ACoS and your tacos as well. Also, if this video provided you, you know, any value whatsoever, if you, you know, look at something differently or, or anything like that, please consider leaving a like down below. It really does help the channel grow and you know, build our community of more like-minded people and I really do appreciate it, so thank you. Now let's talk about rule number four, which is search volume. And a lot of people always ask me, you know, what is, uh, you know, the perfect search volume to launch a product, stuff like that. And for those of you who have worked with me in my programs or just with me in general, you know that I don't really use search volume as a tool in terms of picking a winning product, but I will, uh, I do have one rule about it that I'll share with you today. Basically, uh, you wanna make sure that the main keyword of whatever you're, you know, searching for, whatever product you have, the main keyword has over 3,500 searches. Um, now, because they're just certain markets that just have super, super, you know, the super small markets, so they don't have much search volume. Uh, and that kind of helps you make sure that the, the market you're going to is big enough uh, and you will, you know, be able to succeed there somewhat. So uh, if you go into um, Helium 10's dashboard, you go to keyword research, super simple thing. Just type in like, for example, milestone blanket, right? Because that's what I searched up here. Um, I, I thought as you know, milestone blanket is the kind of word, but 
you never know what the main keyword is. So you have to search it up. So what we're going to do here, search up milestone blanket, get keywords, and I'll show you how to do this. So let's load that. <clears throat> and you'll be able to see when you go to, uh, you know, it's going to pull up all the different keywords for you, go to search volume, and we're going to sort it by high search volume. What you need to be careful of is like, you know, baby registry search. That's obviously not the main keyword for the blanket that you have. You have to find the thing that exactly uh, describes what your product is. So for example, if you're selling a spatula, right? You don't just find a you know, spatula in here. If you're selling like a stainless steel spatula, your main keyword is stainless steel spatula, not spatula. It has to exactly define what you're selling. So in this case, what we'd be looking for is like milestone blanket or baby milestone blanket or something along those lines, right? I'm pretty sure baby milestone blanket is the main keyword. So baby essentials, kitchen mat, photo album, obviously it's not a photo album. It's not baby stuff. It is baby stuff, but it's not, that's not the main keyword. Uh, when someone types in baby stuff, they're not looking for a milestone blanket. They might be looking for other things that babies, you know, like, right? So anyways, you go through it and I think it's somewhere down here. Baby must haves. That's not it, right? Soft blanket, right? That's not what this product is. It's not a soft blanket. It's a baby milestone blanket. So yeah, there you go. Baby milestone blanket. This has been the closest thing that exactly describes our product. You look at the search volume, 22,653. So we're good on that. That passes the 3,500 search volume test. Now let's talk about rule number five, which has to do with BSR graphs. Very, very simple trick, but you know, again, it's kind of an oldie and it's, you know, it's a, it's a staple. So we pulled up the uh, wine tumblers here. And if you scroll down, if you have the Chrome extension for Helium 10, I'm pretty sure this is free, by the way, you know, if you don't have Helium 10, I mean, just get this because it's free. I think it just gives you this kind of graph, right? And usually it'll start off at the 30 day mark. What this does is it shows you, for those of you who don't know, it shows you the sales history of the product. Um, the lower this blue graph goes on the bottom, the lower it is to this bottom line, the more sales it's making, the higher it is, the less sales it's making. So as you can see here, it was making less sales than when it was in here. And you can see the dates at the bottom. Also, you can see the price points here on the left side. So basically what you're looking at is this green one, which is the uh, new price. So if you look here, they're selling now at 899, but you can see here historical data also. So in the last month, they went from 949, as you can see there, New, in the new price is 9.49 to 8.99. Uh, what we're doing with this BSR graph is a few things. One, we want to see how you know the, the the trends of the product go, so we know how to prepare for different parts of the year. You want to make sure that the product isn't super seasonal. So, for example, if you're having you know uh, if you don't know but the product is seasonal, you know that can be a problem. If you you know find the product during the time of its peak seasonality and then you don't know this, but later on it kind of you know its demand drops. So what we always want to do is we want to go and we want to check. Um, like all time, right? That's ideally what we want to do. Sometimes you're going to find products that are kind of new to the market. So don't use those because if they're only been in the market for 90 days or, you know, half a year, that's not enough data. We want at least minimum, minimum we want one year data. So you got to find a product, a main competitor who has at least one year's data. If more, then that's even better. So what we can see here, if we go to like the one year mark, you can see that there was, uh, you know, sales here at the bottom. This so they were selling much more here than they were in this period, and then they were again going selling here a lot. And this was during the Q4 season. I think this was Christmas and stuff like that. And now it's gone back up. So definitely they have kind of a some sort of seasonality here, slight seasonality. But also they do well uh, throughout the year generally, you know, too. So if we go to all time, you can see uh, generally fairly flat here towards the bottom of the line. Right here, you can see there's a lot of noise. This was when the product was launching. So realistically, what we want to do is just kind of cancel that out. What you can do is you just press and drag for this whole time. And then you'll see a more uh, representative graph. You can see all the peaks and valleys of it. This looks fairly stable. There is some kind of trendiness going on here at times. But if you just saw a graph that was all over the place like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, or if it was up the whole, you know, most of the year and then all the way down for like a small period and then all the way back up, that can, you know, say that it's a fairly seasonal, you know, product. So um, that's something to look at, out for. And again, very, very important. Make sure that three quarters of the year it's fairly stable. Uh, and then look for any sort of another thing you can look for is any sort of kind of price uh, jumps. So you can see here they went from 9.99 to 8.49 to 7.21, and so they're changing the prices. You can take a look at different products in the markets and look at their price kind of uh, changes. If the price keeps going up. That's actually a good sign, means that there's like a lot of demand in that market. If you can see that all the products in the market over the past year, their prices have been going down, you know, that's not a good sign. That means there's a lot of uh, demand, not enough, uh, or a lot of uh, supply, not enough demand. And so people are starting to compete on price. 
and that could be indicative of a dying market. So make sure to watch out for that as well. Now, I know if you're new to this, it can seem like there's almost too much information and that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to actually, you know, put kind of take away external information, just focus on these things, everything else, forget about it. Uh, but basically in 2022, I decided to kind of um, make a change in help literally everybody that I can, you know, not just people in my programs, not just people who are, you know, part of like paying me or cons consultations with me and stuff like that. I want to literally uh, be able to help as many people as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link down below this video to join my free Facebook group. Uh, I, you know, I put it like a pledge to, you know, interact more in there and help more people out there. So if you have any questions about finding products or stuff like that, make sure to, you know, post in the group and tag me and I'll come in there and I'll answer your questions. So um, literally anything you, you need, join that Facebook group, I'll be there to help. So now let's talk about rule number six, which is the Google Trends graph. Uh, probably a lot of you guys know this as well, but a quick rundown, uh, go to googletrends.com or whatever Google Trends on Google and come in here, type in, for example, here we have wine tumbler I wrote. Over the past 12 months, you can see that, um, you know, it's fairly stable. So that's what you're looking for. Again, it's kind of similar to the BSR graph. You don't want to see huge peaks and valleys, right? Uh, so like, for example, if we t typed in, um, you know, Halloween, you should see that, yeah, so see it's flat, flat, has a huge search trend and then goes back down, right? So what do we have here? Wine tumbler. So what you're looking for is something that's flat throughout, or not flat throughout the year, something that's fairly consistent throughout the year. Also another thing you can look for is the past five years. And what you're looking for here is not just, you know, seasonality trends, which you can see quite clearly, but also you're looking for to see that over the past, you know, five years, the trend, is it going up? Is it flat or is it going down? In this case, actually, you can see that wine tumblers looks like it was going up and then now it actually looks like it's decreasing. Uh, and you can even see this even more clear if I go 2004 to present, you can see that it was completely flat here, came out of nowhere, got its, you know, initial kind of hype. And then now you can see that it's going down. Uh, and just to show you an example of something else here, just so you can see like a trend that's going upwards, uh, if you type in work from home, obviously it's not a product, but just whatever, you know, bear with me here. Uh, if you go to the past five years, you can see that it looks fairly stable, right? But if you go to the past uh, 2004 to present, you can see very clearly, like very clearly that it is on the, it's trending upwards, obviously with everything going on, but it is trending upwards. So uh, there's like a, a saying, I, I kind of watched the video from uh, Alex Hermosi. If you guys don't know who that is, you know, follow him on YouTube. He's a really smart guy. But essentially, he was saying that he was working with a client or, or someone he was consulting and, or a friend or something. He was saying, like, you know, I'm doing everything, but for some reason, my business isn't growing. Like, it's just, you know, stagnant. And he asked him, like, what business are you? And he said, you know, I'm in a newspaper business. And Alex Ramosi said, well, of course, you're trying everything. You're putting all this work into this. But did you know that your, your whole industry is declining 25% per year? So basically what it meant is that this guy is doing everything that he can to improve the business and increase sales. But because the whole industry, because the whole sector is going down, he's almost like running on a treadmill. He's just keeping up his sales while the whole industry is dying. So on that same note, there's like a, a quote by Warren Buffett who, said, who basically says, it matters more what boat you're in rather than how hard you row. And, and basically that just means find like a market or a niche that has a tailwind to push you into the right direction. In that case, you can do things wrong and still, you know, be very successful because the overall market is heading in the right way. And, and that's like the essential, you know, tip from this whole Google Trends thing is look for things that are kind of emerging markets, not something that is dying, like let's say a wine tumbler or something like that, but look for things that are gaining in popularity, but are not fads right? Make sure to avoid those, obviously. So, so that's kind of the key uh, lesson from the Google Trends. All right, so let's dive into rule number seven, which is the add a product hack. And what this allows us to do is actually see products that haven't launched into the market yet, but are going to be launching into the market. So basically, usually you can just see what products are already there. But as you probably know, you know, sometimes you might be late on a trend and there's already so many people who have products coming into Amazon and they're about to launch and you're only just thinking about getting into the market. So how do you know if there's going to be an influx of new sellers into a market before you? And this is how you do it. It's a little bit time consuming, but it's incredibly important if you know how to use it. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to catalog, add a product, and then you're going to type in the main keyword of your product, the one that we you know, found. So baby milestone blanket. 
And if you search this up, what it's going to do is it's going to show you the whole catalog on Amazon of every product that has that keyword in it. And uh, as you can see, you know, you can see every single product here. Now the key here is to be able to um, go to the la later pages and see how many new products are coming out. Because these ones are kind of established products. If you go here, you open that up, you can see, you know, it has 200 reviews. So, you know, that, that's great. But uh, what we want to do is go to the later pages. So you can go to page like five, even further than that, you know, there's 2,700 pages, right? So that also gives you an idea of how many sellers there are in this space. And, you know, um, one cool hack that you can do is if you go into the URL, now I'm seeing that maybe you can't see that. Let me see if I can bring it down. Okay, let's bring it down. So if you go to the, the um, where is it? The page equals, you can go to like page equals like 30. And if you press search, it's going to go to page 30. If you go at the bottom, you see page 30. So what you can do here is start to open up different sellers. Uh, you can see their sales ranks here as well. So I would look at like uh, sales ranks that are like in the you know higher sales ranks and see how they're doing. Um, let's see these. So I'm gonna open these two. Let's see if they follow. So you can see this is a brand new seller, $13.99, right? He has no reviews. I'm not sure how long he's been selling. You can see he's been selling since, um, you know, the, uh, since December, 2021. So like really not that long ago. So it is a fairly new listing here as well, 12 reviews. So this is currently unavailable. Um, maybe they're coming back in stock. Maybe they sold out of their things. Um, this guy's been, you know, also since September, right? So it gives you a good idea. You can start going through these and start picking out like different, um, different products here. So this is an older one. So 86, this one's just not doing so well, but it gives you an idea of how many sellers there are in the space. So keep opening up, opening these up, uh, taking a look at the, you know, four ratings, right? So this is a new one as well. While this is a kind of time consuming thing, if you spend enough time here and doing the research, you will see, you know, how many new products are coming into this market. With the baby milestone blanket, I can probably find hundreds of them, which again would give me a clue that this is not a good market to go into. So those are the exact metrics I use and the ones I teach my students to find winning products. So I do hope it helps you. And if you want, you know, any more tips and, and kind of tricks, I have a full Amazon FBA like mini course playlist where we go over product research, keywords, PPC, optimizations, all that kind of stuff. And I'm gonna leave that down below in, you know, in the description of this video if you wanna go check that out. Spend some time, watch those videos. That, you know, I, I put a lot of time into them and, and they were really well received. So I think that they will help a lot of you if you haven't watched them already. Um, so go ahead and check that out. And um, thank you for watching. I appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.